pretty nervous for the interview coming up. I have some questions that I want to ask just to make sure that I'm on the right track and as far as applying for the internship opportunity as well as just general concerns or questions that I have about audio engineering in general. Um, I'm meeting with John Kane who works at Subcat Studios so it should be a cool experience. He's also a session musician at Subcat Studios so there's two parts to it but I want to specifically focus strictly on the audio engineering aspect of it. Um, I think it will be beneficial for me in the long term to really figure out if this is the career that I want to do. This is the specific internship that I want. If I really want to work in a studio versus maybe going more music business side of things. As of right now, I really think that sitting in a studio and working in a studio with different artists, trying to get to their ultimate goal is what I want to do. So what better way to, you know, get to know the experience from someone who actually experienced it and goes through it on a daily basis. So we'll see how the interview goes. Like I said, I'm nervous. And um, it's a very casual interview. Um, didn't have to dress up or anything like that. Just in a button down and a pair of pants. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully everything goes well. And I'll talk to you guys about it after. <laughs> so the first question would be at what point did you know this is what you wanted to do this is the career you wanted to um it was kind of a longer process I always knew that I wanted to do something in music just because I grew up always really interested in music and playing a lot of drums specifically when I was a kid mm -hmm. and then I did the whole you know drums thing in school and some of that I was interested in some of it a little less so but then what really got me interested in music was actually like playing in marching band outside of school and then just coming with drumming there's a lot of these little technical aspects of that and I think like I think I don't think I would have wanted to become an audio engineer if I had played saxophone or something like that I think just because thinking of drumming and breaking down all the little things your hands have to do got me interested in more tech stuff for whatever reason like okay. technique based things and then from that, I was like, hmm, how does sound work? How do speakers work? This is kind of cool stuff, too. My dad plays guitar, so we had a bunch of amps and stuff in the basement to kind of poke around with and learn about. And I was like, oh, this, this stuff's pretty cool. And then later on in high school, my senior year, I took this class that was an entrepreneurship class. And I partnered up with this other guy in my school who was a more electrical engineer type kid. Okay. And then him and I decided to make this company that was – a budget home recording studio thing and then we pitched it to some local investors whatever and they actually gave us like a thousand dollars so we bought a board and that's the board I still have now to use for recording so then really that's went it. to college for drumming and audio engineering and then now I'm lucky to be working at a place like this okay okay how much do you did you learn on your own early on how much did you learn as you went through your college experience there was, there was this kind of mentor that I had who was the owner of the local music shop, and he knew a lot more about the gear and things like that. So whenever I had questions about more technical stuff like that, he was who I would go to. And he also had an employee who I knew from drumming um, who went to school for audio engineering. So I was always like asking him little questions like, what kind of compression threshold shit would you use? For right, like, right. And he was like, oh, like, you know, whatever. And he would answer my questions, and that was cool. Um, you asked like in college too? Yeah, or? yeah. Um, my, my professors mostly. Mostly. And professors. then honestly, a lot of the really nitty gritty stuff that they can't teach you straight up just looked up on the internet. Okay. There's this really great resource called Sound on Sound magazine and okay. it's these British guys who really break down every Actually, little piece no, of, exactly. yeah. What you're talking about, yeah. And I, I really love reading about that stuff. So got you, got you. So you said you learned from your professors. Were there any classes in particular that 
really excelled you and got you to the next level in audio engineering? The first, uh, the classes that you take that you actually learn things in would be the basic re studio recording class. But then this, the class that I really liked a lot was the DAW class, which is basically Pro Tools class. Okay. And that was cool because it's always interesting to learn about how to record things in the room with the microphones and how the microphones work and everything from the studio recording class. But the Pro Tools class was cool because you're really learning how to mix, how to create a product out of sounds that you have, or even you have maybe bad sounds and you got to turn them into something good or just like troubleshooting. So I like the problem solving aspect of, okay. of the computer things that we were doing in the Pro Tools class. Now you talked about your internship experience at Subcat. Mm -hmm. Did you have, you had all this prior knowledge going into that. Mm -hmm. Did you necessarily need that prior knowledge? I think so because they have other interns there that come in and know just a little bit of things that they learned in school. And then a lot of times what they want you to do as an intern there will be, they'll be like, okay, I have these like five sessions. Can you go in and auto tune all of the flute parts or whatever? Or can you go in and like chop out or edit these certain sections of this to then give to me to then send to the client or whatever. And if you didn't know how to do that, then they would be like, okay, well, I guess you can go wrap some cables <laughs> or like you can go clean something. Okay. So it was like, oh, I know how to do this kind of technical stuff. Let me actually go and do it. But then there were so many little things that I learned by just going in and showing up. Like they would place some mic a certain way. They would check the phase a certain way. The way they use different gear would just be different things I wouldn't have thought to do. So gotcha. that was really important. Gotcha. Um, I guess... The last question would be, do you have any tips moving forward, like things that you put into place and that you still like look back on and still use today? Hmm. Like literally like tips or just things to think just about? Just things to, I guess things to think about. Okay. I think the, the one principle I've, I've learned that I always try to, keep with me every time I work is you have to get the sound right in the room before you put it into the computer. Cause a lot of times people will concentrate on buying all these crazy plugins and really worry about what's happening in the box, but then they don't put as much time and care into the things they're actually recording in the studio. So I think making sure your drum is tuned correctly and it sounds good in the room, not does it just sound good through the tom mic or like making sure all your guitar strings are perfectly in tune just like little musicianship things that if someone wasn't a musician and only an engineer they might not be able to hear the fact that a guitar isn't in tune or the pianist every time they pick up their foot off the pedal like makes a huge clump of clunking sound so it's just nice to be cognizant of the fact that you are recording in a room and you need to make sure things are sounding good in there to then translate them into a digital product. Okay. So I try to just think about that. Okay. Well, I guess that was it. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> so I think the interview went really well. I really liked what John had to say, um, what he brought to the table, how, how he answered the questions I had. Um, it showed, I guess it didn't show, it reassured me personally that this is actually what I want to do for a career, and this is something that really interests me and I'm really passionate about, and I want to work to get to where he is. And I just think it's it was cool to get some insight from someone who has credibility in the music industry world, someone yeah, it's not easy to just be able to go up to someone and have a conversation and pick their brain about different things and how they got to where they are and what drives them and motivates them or what tips they have for someone like me who isn't really sure where they want to go, where they fit in the industry, if they even want to work in the industry at all. And I think that meeting with him really showed me that this is what I want to do and this is what I'm passionate about. So it was really cool. Um, one thing that I realized that a after the interview is I kind of lack eye, con eye contact at times. And I think I can really work on that 
for later interviews. Um, also, my posture. I kind of caught myself like slouching over or so just staying alert and upright at all times really I think will help in the future. Both of those things were something as the interview was going on I would realize and then correct myself but I think it's something that I really can focus on throughout the duration of the interview from beginning to end and just show that I'm more attentive and my posture is positive, like positive posture, everything's looking good. So I'm really engaged in the interview process itself and that kind of thing. But all in all, I think it was a very good interview and he had a lot of information for me that I think will help me along the way as I apply for different internships at different studios and at Subcat Studios as well. So hopefully... My next interview will go well and can move on from there and become an intern at a studio because I think this is the appropriate path for me. And that's it. So.